Hey everyone, it's Kim and it's been, it's been a beat. It's been about two weeks since you've seen any new content come up on my channel. And frankly, I just thought I'd come say hi. Uh, it has been a really busy last couple of weeks for my personal life, my job, um, and also my subscription box, read it and eat. So without going into the details of my personal life, because honestly, it's a little dramatic and I'm still kind of processing some stuff that's going on in my life. Let me tell you about the good stuff. So first and foremost, if you've been on my channel for any extended period of time, you know I have been crowdfunding. I've been trying to raise money for Read It and Eat to help my small business grow and continue to bring you guys qualities, Read It and Eat subscription boxes. I want to bring you along on a culinary adventure. I know and believe that there is a story on your plate. And by curating boxes around food themes that pair books and foodie goodies and delicious treats from small businesses in the United States, it's the perfect way to reinvigorate and re-energize your relationship with food and books and adventure. And we finished crowdfunding last Monday and we did it. On the last day, someone funded and brought the campaign to 100%. So first, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. It is such a relief to have that kind of funding support. My business is me, myself, and I. It is largely entirely self-funded, other than this crowdfunding campaign and some small grants I've received along the way. So first and foremost, thank you so very much. With the conclusion of the crowdfunding campaign, I feel like I can breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief. It takes a lot to run a crowdfunding campaign, to maintain interest, to be authentic, and I felt like I was on all the time. And when you are your small business, you, you are on all the time. Your, your face, you need to be out there shaking hands and kissing babies, if you will. So two weeks ago, right before Easter, I was also at a spring slash Easter holiday market called Makers and Shakers here in New York. So I spent that whole weekend selling, talking to people locally, trying to make connections. And that, you know, I usually only film content on the weekends. So I lost that weekend. And last week was Easter. Um, without going too far into it, Easter was, this was the first holiday my mom proactively wanted to host um, since my dad died last January. Sorry. And it felt really important for me to be there. So Dan and I drove six hours to my big sister's house where we stayed and she lives an hour from my mom. So it was really nice to see family regardless of how long that drive was and 23 people ended up at Easter this year. My mom is one of six. I've always been from a big family. But it was so nice to be enveloped in that that love, especially after the last couple of weeks that Dan and I have been going through. But a lot of these people Dan and I haven't hadn't seen in four, almost four years. So even prior to the pandemic, when we moved to Chicago, you know, we're far away. We made a choice to move you know, everyone's on the East Coast. We moved to the Midwest, essentially, to go to Chicago. So people hadn't even seen us because our wedding and COVID being, moving the wedding out a year when dad was going through chemo, then COVID putting a damper on it, having a smaller wedding, having dad pass away, us moving, it'd been a long time and it was really an emotional moment. More good than bad. Trust me, guys. It was, it was lots of hugs, lots of laughter. It was so much fun to laugh and be with these people again. Um, but it was also hard. There's a lot of faces people make when it's the first time they've seen you since a big loss. And wow, I am really emotional. I think that's why it's been so hard to film. But having my uncle see me in four years and give me a hug and say how much he missed my dad and how proud my dad would be of me. That stuff means a lot, but it's it's always kind of hard. It's bittersweet to hear. It always will be. So, you know, that's been the last couple of weeks. Really, really highs. Ooh, sorry. Okay. Okay. 
So there's been some really high highs and some sad kind of lows. Um, Dad's birthday was in April, April 13th. So like, you know, it comes, it comes and goes. And I don't want to force myself to do things, especially in my grieving process. I've just kind of learned if I need space, I need space. And I also had this weird immense guilt for not filming. The algorithm yells at you. I hate the YouTube, like, the YouTube back end, like, app that's like, you've lost more subscribers this month than you've gained subscribers this month. Your view rates are down. Your, like, duration of view times are down. My videos right now are only averaging 60 to 70 views. About a year ago, I was getting, like, around 100 views or more. So even though my subscriber count goes up, my views are going lower, I don't know who the algorithm is showing my videos to, what if my keywords are wrong, and it can really mess with your head. I, I'll just put it out there, it can mess with your head. Instagram is now only really promoting video content, especially reels, and I'm just not great at making reels. I'm great at talking to the camera and making 10 minute long videos. I'm not great at making three minute videos, so I'm feeling that kind of stress too. And then TikTok, which, well now TikTok has 10 minute long videos, which TikTok's really coming after Twitch. I don't know if TikTok's coming after YouTube. And I like opened up TikTok because I had to for work. And like, I hate TikTok. The algorithm cannot figure out what I like, other than puppies. I'm totally fine that it shows me puppies, ducklings, and is it, is it cake kind of fun. But like when I'm looking in book talk, there's really not a lot of nonfiction book talk to to be seen or I'm not seeing it. So that's been the last couple of weeks. Um, on top of it, I went into a huge reading slump. I averaged seven books a month. It's April, God, what is it? April like 24th, let me check. It's April 23rd and I've read four books. Again, that's like reading anything is fine, but for the first two solid weeks, I don't think I finished my first book until April 15th. It was just kind of like everything needed to shut down in my head and I needed to just focus on getting through each day. And it's, it's a weird sense of guilt when you're a small business owner, like you are your brand. And it's really hard to like put up a sign and be like, sorry, this brand is closed because the founder really needs to take a nap and like take 10. But I did. Did the world end? No. Do I feel like I'm consistently behind now? Yes. I ran out of pre-banked content. Here we are today um, filming things. So all in all, I'm not apologizing for not being here, but giving context for why I wasn't. It is meant, this YouTube channel is meant to be a hobby. It's meant to be something that makes me happy and books are supposed to books make me happy. And when they're not making me happy, I go into reading slumps. So we took a beat and we're back. Again, I have, I always try to count my blessings. So a lot of really great things are happening. We hit 100% on my crowdfunding goal. I had a really good local makers and shakers selling event. I got to see family. I feel better. Do I feel 100% better? No, but I think it was the right thing to do. And I'm working on revamping my website right now. I have a small business coach I've been working with and we're about eight weeks into our partnership. And I've had a really, a couple really great breakthroughs that I want to incorporate. And I'm back to reading, which is the thing I care about the most is I just want to read and enjoy it. I never want to lose that spark. When I wasn't reading these past two weeks, I have to give a shout out to this very sweet anime called Sweetness and Lightning. It's about a um, male teacher and he is now a single father after his wife has suddenly died. And he does not know how to cook. He does not know how to re... He wants to connect with his daughter, who is a preschooler, kindergartner, very young. Um, but he doesn't know how to cook. And he forges this unique relationship with a high school student of his. Um, there is no romance, to be, to be very clear. There is no romance between this high schooler and this teacher. Um, the high schooler, her mother is a famous chef. She's on air and traveling all the time. And all, a lot of the time, Koto, Koto, Kotonomi is left alone. And she too does not really know how to cook despite being the daughter of a famous chef. She also has a fear of knives after injuring herself as a young child. So this teacher and this student learn to cook together at her her mother's restaurant, like they live upstairs, the mom's restaurant is downstairs. So they're learning to cook together. 
Um, it's about relationships, like how his best friend has looks like looks like a gangster, um, but really has stepped in to be a real. Any, they've been friends for a very long time, but having friends that support you while you're going through grief and loss, and even Kotonomi learning to talk to her own friends about how she misses her mom. It is one of the sweetest food-related animes ever. It is also a light novel, um, so I picture over here hopefully in this section. It is a super sweet story and it is really what I needed. It's also because it's slice of life light novel there could be more volumes. I'm pretty sure it is done. The anime was 12 episodes and it was just sweet. It was what I needed. I also binged watched the entire series season of Is It Cake? I have to like ar ar Every time I have to like articulate it that way, I have to give that intonation, is it cake? Question mark. That was also a really lighthearted Netflix TV series. Like it was kind of fun. It's not the greatest format. Like I have critiques about the show in general, but is it cake involves pastry chefs creating illusion based cakes. It came from the TikTok trend. Netflix picked it up, made it its own show. And Mikey Day, who's well known for his work on SNL is the host. It is a pretty funny show. It's just very fluffy. There are some beats that I don't think work very well in this format. And I don't know if it's me being a foodie snob or just having that background in food and television. But at the beginning, contestants have 20 seconds to look at like, let's say six columns and identify which food is the fake. And if they're right, they get to bake in the competition that round. Three people are eligible. They, they bake. Then they have three judges come in and the judges have 20 seconds to look at each cake. So contestants, one cake is let's say a taco. It's put in a field of real tacos and the comedian or the three guests, which is usually a comedian, someone from an, an affiliate Netflix show, and then one other person, usually a foodie person, have a, they have 20 seconds to mutually decide on which cake is the fake. And if you are one of the winners, you have the chance for $5,000. If you win that round between you and the two other contestants, you go on to the bonus round. The bonus round, there are two bags of money presented in front of you. One is cake and 